Hello, everyone. Welcome to the October 26, 2022 meeting of the Waynesboro Area School District Board of Directors. We'll start with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, is full, liberty, and justice for all. Okay, Ms. Cooser, we need to put the button here. Good. Read what that says. That has nothing to do with what I just said. Anyway, uh, so we're good um, for uh, everyone being in attendance. Moving on to the approval of the agenda. Changes, Dr. Klein? No, not at this time. Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is the minutes. Do we have a motion? Move to approve the minutes. Second. Questions, anybody pertaining to the minutes from our last meeting? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Superintendent's report, Dr. Klein. I only have one quick thing is to let you know tomorrow we start kicking off our United Way campaign for the district. So that'll be starting. So we hope that we'll, we'll be able to have a good showing for the United Way. Good cause. So now we kick that off tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For public comment tonight, we do have uh, one person who would like to speak, Terry Sebold, who would like to address us concerning a safety issue. You could just restate your address. That would be great. Let's see. One, two, six, nine, four, Centerville Road. Um, I just wanted to bring to the board's attention a safety issue I noticed this summer that I thought maybe it was just there and that for sure when the school got in session that it was going to be. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but the flashing light that the Y is no longer there. When it ran through, not one at the Y. Hmm. I have pictures. Huh. Lights you mean so it's there. not working? So it's not there. Oh. It's not there at all. There was a vehicle accident that took it out. Okay. And the borough hasn't been able to find a replacement yet. Okay. Yeah, usually they're yeah. they're put in by the borough and townships. Yeah. The okay. schools don't. They've um, really struggled to find parts and find replacement lights. Yeah. No, yeah. When people the other way. Um, You're right. And it's like, you know, it's a yeah. safety yeah. issue. Right. No, I agree with you. Right. If I agree. If people are coming this way, what can they pull them over for? Because there's nothing that says they're supposed to go 15 miles an hour. Right. Yeah, you're right. No. How long ago did that happen? Yeah, no, long no, the accident happened. it's been quite a while. Um, they just have not been able to get parts. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we don't have the flashing lights at the new crosswalk with Martins there um, with the shopping center, because they just haven't been able to get the equipment. And they had a supplier, my understanding, if I don't quote me on this, but I think the supplier went out of business and they've been trying to get another supplier or something along those lines. I could just get a hold. Well, I, and I said parts. I probably should have meant the whole light, but I, yeah, I think it's the whole equipment. But yeah, it's it's more waiting for something to arrive. It hasn't been, you know, yeah. They've been aware of that for a while. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. If somebody's speeding one way, but they're not the other, probably can't. Yeah, you probably can't do that. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you very much thank for. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, moving on, then. Next item is board reports. Anybody? Have anything? Academic committee meeting tomorrow at 10 30. Facilities met last week at Hooverville. So thank you very much for letting us be there. Um, and so, as always, there's always going to be a, several items that are up for discussion. I don't think we have anything today's agenda, um, but um, we, need, we have lots of projects ongoing. So, okay. Anything else? This is Sullivan. Did we want to talk about, um, from the policy perspective, the changes, some of the changes we made with uh, dress code regarding students? Oh. 
I mean, essentially the information has been shared with the families at this point, but we've made some accommodations and made some changes over the course of the last couple of weeks. And those went into effect last week. One, two. I would like to see the, the revised. Okay, we're talking the student. The, re the, student ones, the student ones have gone forward and have been posted and shared. Correct. I believe you're referencing the staff one that you and I talked no, about. No, actually, I'm not referencing that one um, because I didn't make any changes to the student one. What I did was reword some of those things to try to make it easier for parents to under, parents and students to understand. So I'd like to see that in writing before we go farther, even though they're they're already put into place. I understand, and I don't think any changes. You would just like it revised in terms of how the wording is. Exactly. Okay, we'll take care of that. Okay, thank you very All much. Right. I, I just want it to be very easily understood for students and parents and administration. So I, we think, a, I think that's important. We have a policy committee. Seventh, seventh uh, or ninth of November. I forget. I don't have my sheet like, here. First is ninth Monday. of November it sounds right. November ninth. Ninth. Okay. So, if we could have the new wording, then just spend a few minutes going over it, and then I'll bring it to. Because I really wasn't ready to do that. I apologize I for bringing it stuff <laughs> on my on my my list for the next meeting, which I just sent to Todd. Yeah. So the idea of not having one in November. Right. We are going to have right, one. Right, right. And, yeah. and the, if it's in the handbook, you'll have to have the board approve, re approve the handbook. It, so it's changed. Sure. And I think what we did is at this point, because we had shared with our with our faculty so they would have an understanding and with our learners. So it's essentially been put in place. I mean, there were very few revisions, but um, to be able to exercise those changes immediately, they were already shared. Correct, Dr. McCallum? Okay. I believe the middle school has them. I know they do at this point. So, <laughs> all right, we're good. Actually, I, I just feel better about you know, uh, yeah, looking at it again before we, we actually do make those. I mean, I realize the changes are in place and I believe the whole policy committee is in agreement with those changes, correct? It, it appeared that way at the last meeting. Yes, but it would be nice to be able to see it before <laughs> we really do approve. It. Okay, so I did share in the Friday folder, the Friday but then folder. there were revisions made that you had shared with me. Um, but yeah, so I can I can make those revisions and reshare it in my Friday folder. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, student board rep report. Riley's got it. So we do have some exciting trips coming up for some of our clubs. So first we have Kalahari coming this weekend for FBLA. So I am the president of FBLA and we do have a lot of new members this year, which was one of my goals was to increase the membership. But we have a lot of new faces. So I'm really excited to see the impact that Kalahari had. Um, we're not necessarily always all freshmen. We do have some more underclassmen, but I remember my freshman year when I was a little freshman and how I came back from Kalahari, a new person. Okay, wait, so you gotta talk about Kalahari. It is a indoor water park, so it's in the Poconos, so it's a three and a half hour drive in a van. Not going to be fun, <laughs> but when we get there on Saturday, we have the whole water park to our, like, we have the whole water park, and then Sunday, we have, um, it's like a conference, so from, like, 9 a.m. to 5, we have different classes, so I'm personally looking forward to the public speaking one, some ones about skills for our future, since I am a senior looking into colleges, stuff I'm going to need, and then there's some about our competitive events, how to prepare, 
So we do conferences and little like segments. And then from five to like eight, we can do what we want in reason, of course, but we have some free time. So of course I'm going to be studying. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, chocolate. <laughs> um, no, but then at um, eight o'clock when the regular water park closes, we'll have the whole park to ourselves for just FBLA. So last year we did have FBLA, the conference at Kalahari, but it was the whole um, theme was superheroes wear masks and we all were masked up. You didn't get to see anyone's faces. You didn't get any real interaction with them. It was kind of in like a, like we were in our own little bubble. So this year I've been on like countless Zoom calls about bringing back what it was my freshman year. So I'm really excited and looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, that's the update with the FBLA. Now, wait a minute. Now, how many people are in FBLA now? And 20. what kind of an increase from last year would you say that is? We had Close, seven, you don't have to get it exactly. We had seven members. I would say by last year, we lost two seniors and one moved away. And then this year we have 24 great. and 16 going to, or 15 going to Kalahari. Hmm, great. So that was a big improvement for yep. me. That was one of my goals was to grow the membership and not have a little Fantastic. tiny drop. Yep. Uh, we also have the class. So I think that helps a little bit too. The class is kind of small, but we still can branch out for the club. So also speaking of trips, we have our student conference, our student council one coming up. That's next weekend. So next Thursday through Saturday. Um, I've never been to Boyerstown, so that's going to be exciting. Um, also with that, I'm excited to learn more things and see what we can do to build our student council and actually give back to our community better because we want to branch out of our student council. We've done the same things. So just branching out a little bit, having some more fun, of course. Thank and you, who are your fun. advisors this year? Mrs. Banky and Mrs. Bittner. Okay. So They're, that's their first year, right? Yes, okay. we did get new advisors. So just seeing how other people run student council, what more we can do, how we can give back more, more fun ideas and of course. All right. And then off the fun trips, now back to the normal stuff. So we did have a college visit or a college visit slash like decision day last Thursday. So that went well. We had Penn State on our Penn State um, per, uh, admissions person come down. We had your college. We did mock interviews, all that, um, all that good stuff. Um, so with the Penn State, we had him sit down and help us with doing the application along with waiving the $60 fee. So that was some fun, good little treat of coming down and applying for Penn State. And then we had the mock interviews. So I did the mock interviews last year and we had the same guy come back and then we, I did it with Mr. Hoffman. So, um, but yeah, so we got to do a mock interview, what he would ask me for a college interview, what would happen, some of the things. So that was interesting and fun. <laughs> All right, and then the Rotary Club. So the Rotary Club is welcoming new students back. So for FBLA, I went last Tuesday. This Tuesday, we had two new people go. So it's nice to come back to the Rotary and be able to be welcomed and have all the fun stuff without COVID, getting able to return back to normal for my senior year. It's really important and fun. So I'm excited for that. And then an update with community arts. So our community arts painted a beautiful mural for our hometown heroes that's up against the Christine Cafe in Waynesboro. Um, I did get to see it. It's in honor of them. It is so pretty. So I'm excited for to see what other murals they can do and make Wayne's. Would that be Mrs. Herb's class? Do you know? No? They did yes. the other two. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's How is homecoming? Fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was... For me, it was fun, but it was a lot of emotions because it is my last homecoming. So we had some tears, we had some laughs, you know, um, but it was overall fun. All the hard work decorating, not, that was not fun. <laughs> that was us in tears because stuff kept falling and would not stay for vines. I mean, but boatloads and boatloads of vines. I've never seen so many vines packed in one little container, <laughs> um, but it did turn out beautiful. So all our hard work did really work. nice. Yeah. So the final product was worth it. Um, I, it was all the hard work of Cassidy and um, all our members. I mean, Ada really took it good. Zoe, we had a lot of underclassmen really help us because we were lost with coming because things kept falling down and they came to the rescue. So right. we were excited to see it finally turn out and have a sort of normal homecoming. Well, yeah. it was normal, a normal homecoming, like and my I, freshman year. Yeah. So 
right but it's been rough it's been two rough years yeah so it's nice kind of seeing everything come back normal and I feel old because I'm like oh when I was in freshman like you know (laughs) and we're young young. young. (laughs) that's all I have for you guys all right Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, she's going to run for office in ten. Yeah. Your enthusiasm is very refreshing. <laughs> I enjoy listening to you talk. <laughs> okay. On to business items. First one, personnel, Dr. Sternerheim. Thank you, Mrs. Harold. I'd like to direct your attention to the personnel items. We have uh, resignation of support staff, resignation of extracurricular staff, uh, appointments of support staff, additional appointments of support staff, appointment of appointment of coaching staff, appointments of substitute support staff. And we have two requests for leaves. Final page. Uh, additional. Sorry. Uh, appointment of substitute support staff and additional um, changes in. Um, from a current assignment to a new assignment. So recommendation goes as listed. We have a motion. Second. Questions, anyone? Okay. Um, All those in favor of accepting the personnel, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. On to next item, which is SOAR Consortium, Dr. Klein. Okay, this I have, uh, you know, sent information out to the board and discussed this maybe a, a, a meeting or two ago to give the board a heads up of what this is. Um, the different, di- this is a consortium made up of uh, Tuscarora, um, Greencastle, Shippensburg, Waynesboro, and even Fannet Meadow. And what it is, it is it's a um, um, a kind of an uh, option for placement of students that are um, uh, that are expelled from our district or have to be uh, or need another option. Also, uh, those seats that are not used for those students, um, uh, if we have a student that would be suspended out of school for three days, ten days, whatever we can place them in one of the empty seats um, you know, during their time that you're, they're out. As long as we have an empty seat, we'd be able to do that. I'm asking to be able to move forward and give a consent that we would be joining the consortium, uh, to, you know, asking for that tonight. There's no contract, nothing. I've given you an outline of the costs. Um, the actual uh, host of this will not be the uh, private provider or Laurel Life, it will actually be Shippensburg. Shippensburg uh, School District will be the host. They are very uh, used to having these consortiums in uh, Cumberland County. They do a number of them, also in Dauphin County and others. Uh, But down here, we haven't been as used to doing the consortium, but they are willing to be the host. However, what they're asking is that we kind of give a little bit of a nod that we're willing to participate and move forward. Uh, No contracts yet, but and that will all depend on costs, final costs and all that. Um, uh, But so they can take it to their board and say we have four districts that are willing to do this. And that's so that's what we're looking at now. The, again, there are two issues here that you have to consider. Um, Laurel Life is willing to run this for a half a year to see if it works and to see how it goes. Uh, most of the districts have said they'd like to do it a year and a half to see how it goes first. Um, but we could have we, we can move forward with just a half a year for it. Um, it, it is a difference in cost, uh, and if it doesn't work by the end of the year, we move on to something else uh, by next year. Uh, so that that's basically it. I don't know if there are any questions. Located where? It will be located at this time at Browns Mill. We had looked at other things, talked about moving it. It wasn't going anywhere because of the cost, uh, so it Browns Mill. 
All right, well, let's have a motion, then we'll get to more questions. Do we have a motion to approve this? Anybody motion to approve? I move to approve. Okay. All right, I'll second. Okay. But uh, I think a half a year's. What? I don't think you're going to know much in a half a year. No, maybe not. They offered it, and I just wanted to make sure the board understood they're willing to do it a half year. My only concern with a half a year, my question was, is that will you be able to get people staff it? for just a half a year yeah. and they said they would use those people for other things if it didn't go further than a half a year because they said they didn't use her but most of the districts are talking about a year and a half they feel that would give them time to see but again i wanted to share it they are willing to do it half a year if if we couldn't get a year well, do they still own that building yes yeah uh, they've done some uh you know um uh, some uh, they fixed it up some. They they they've put in air conditioning. Uh, they've done some painting. They've put new windows in. It's still an old building, but they have done some updating with. Questions? Okay. I will, did you say how many kids total? For us, it would no, only be eight. No, I meant. Oh, for the total program. Yeah, total program. Well, between what the districts have said they would commit right now, uh, about eighteen. So we'd have the majority of it now. Um, and then Shippensburg would be next. Uh, Fannett Meadow, I'm not sure they've committed to any yet, but I know they, they're they looking for a place. Uh, um, are, we, oh, go ahead. are we asking for eight or is that what they're telling us? I'm asking for eight from the board. Uh, they, they would need 15 to run the program. And if we go five, they can still run it. Um, I think that the cost will go up per student a little bit. Uh, it just won't at the same price, but it won't go up as cost for eight. Take some of our existing other places to put here. It could if we don't have, you know, if we aren't committed to those. Okay. But I think some of them, I think we have a contract though with mm -hmm. River Rock, which we have committed there. Mm -hmm. Now I think some of them that we have, uh, we only pay if we send them but uh, that might be uh... we have I, I know you said this and i don't remember do we have a certain number of students ever rock how many we have five. Oh, five we have five and but we don't but we're only using three of them utilizing three at this point we pay for five mm -hmm. pay for five even if we're not so would we be paying for eight here even if we didn't even utilize all eight yeah now again, you can send suspended <coughs> students. We would have to transport them. No, actually, the yeah, transportation is in there at sixty-seven dollars per student per day okay. if it's being used by that student. I wanted to ask about that. Sixty-seven dollars per student. Do they have monitors on the bus or? It that's actually the way they the way they're doing it. It's actually the the uh, instructors and the people of the class that will be doing transportation. So they do it from the so beginning. somebody's on the bus besides the bus driver. I think they're driving the bus. I, I think <laughs> some of the no, those people are driving the bus. Oh. Now, how many are on the bus? I'm not sure, but I know their staff is driving. Okay. So that that same staff member is front with them from the time they pick them up to the end, drop them off. And is that different, like for Fanet Metal? Are they paying more in transportation than us, or are they just averaging? No, I, I think that's for everybody. Everybody now, pays I, the same. Except for like Greencastle, it might be a little cheaper because of, you know, Browns Mills. And right. Well, that's what I was thinking. The, the distance yeah, could make it, a difference. Other question. Okay. Do we have spots we pay for at Marikee or at just? That is per use, I think. I think. Yeah. It's at least per use. Use. Yeah, there's an agreement, I think, that's on the agenda. Yes. But and that we're billed uh, as we, as as we, we use, use the spots. And how many kids do we have? Five. Else? If we don't do this now, can we opt in later? They without ours, I'm not sure it will run. Okay. They have they said you said they had to have a commitment. Well, they need at least 15 odds. Okay. Seats. Yeah, I'm a little, I mean, I think if you have to do this to get there, I think it's a good option for because it's so much closer than River Rock. And I really like the idea of uh, using it for suspensions. I mean, we've yeah. talked about that for a long time. 
um, to kind of put a little bit more oomph, you know, because mm -hmm. having suspended right. kids out on the street, not having being supervised, I think that's great. Um, I'm a little skeptical that we can do eight for this, that we'll have eight going in and for the yeah, second not, semester. Yeah, um, I'll be the first to admit. Uh, I, we didn't have much choice, I think, with River Rock at the beginning of the year because this was not settled. Right, but right. no, I get it, I get then, it. We would have been okay, but right now we would have quite a few seats. And we would be approving the half year. Or are we well, approving a year and a half? I was going to recommend the year and a half, okay. but you can do a half a year if you felt, like, if you felt that was best. Okay. But we would be able to approve less than eight yeah. seats? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't be able to go below five. Just, if, if everyone else approves the number of seats they've committed, we wouldn't be able to go below five because I know they wanted 15 in the program. I mean, I'd be more comfortable with five for this for this spring semester okay. and eight, you know, and eight for next year. I'm so just, I'm, five I'm, for the rest of this year and then well, from January to the end or December to the end. And then well, I think we'd be able to reduce our river rock slots for next year then. I, I believe that is the intent. Like, in other words, we we went with River Rock because we needed right. an option. And so this we Dr. Klein and I both toured and we went to the meeting. Um, right. But at that point, there wasn't really a proposal on the table. Right. So. I got, yeah, I got it. Well, I I mean, I'm OK with the five as long as the program still runs with five. But if they're going to say, you know, we need you to have eight to get this thing to run. I mean, I'm I, very supportive probably, of it, so I wouldn't want it to fold. If for that can, reason, if they, if for whatever reason they can't run it, I, I can bring it back when you have to approve it. Okay. Um, you know, we just need an approval to move forward to so okay. we can show Shippensburg we're committed to being part of it. Okay. I agree with um, you, Karen. I wouldn't want to see it fold for three. Right. Yeah. But you are, but I do understand you don't want to see, you know, uh, it's at River Rock and then five seats at or being open. I mean, I would be hopeful that we wouldn't do that right, in, right. in the spring semester, you know, possible, but yeah. Well, spring, you might have more OSS. Isn't it? Sometime. And this would, this doesn't, would not have any AEDY requirements, correct? No, that we can't. Okay. So, so if we approve five, we can't increase that. We, we could increase. Yeah. Before the, we the do max, the final. Before yes. we do the final thing. Yes. Okay, okay. And the max yeah. for the program would be 20. Okay. So if oh. down the road you ever see it, you need more. Okay. okay. But also, in the meantime, you may see competition from some of the others saying maybe in a year we can do it. Well, also, $67 per day per student. Really high between Waynesboro and Brown. That's why I asked if there was a difference with the distance. Yeah, Spanish I know because it's coming a whole lot farther than Waynesboro is. I, and I can ask that. I can ask. I know Greencastle's much because it's there, but I can ask. I, it, it does make sense for for some of the others, Shippensburg, especially Tuscarora, Adams. any of them except yeah. for us. I mean, we're the second closest, right? I think. So. I mean, there must be a formula. They didn't just pick that number out. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. I agree. Find out more about that. I will. Please. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, as is, at least with this commitment to move forward, is what we're looking at for this vote right now. Does anybody have any other questions, though? Are you th thinking of five for the first half and then eight the next year? Or, the... or if we can I think so. Yeah, I do. Take those people. Mrs. Harold, may I confirm the motion? Yes. I have motion to move forward with the SOAR consortium for the spring semester with five slots. Okay. Correct. Uh, correct. So what was the original motion? Um, I just had motion to approve. Okay, as it was. And what was the I'm proposal? Not. Were you proposing for the whole year? Well, I th it, was it five uh, for the spring semester and then no. eight for the next school well, year. Well, that's the, the current, but I'm just looking at amending the original oh, motion. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so who made the original motion? Okay, so amended or not, are you willing to make this motion for five slots for half a year, eight slots starting the next school year? Correct. Okay, Correct. you're willing to do that. And I think what we're doing now is really five slots for a half year. Correct. Correct. Right. 
and then <laughs> deciding later on about next that's, year. Okay, that's not what Dr. Klein just asked. Oh, right. it, you were asking exactly. if we're doing it five with the intention of eight next year. Well, I was thinking that you guys were thinking that there would be five for the spring and then all of next year, eight. Right. I'm willing to. Are you okay with that? Yeah, agree with that. I'd also like to have um, the price of transportation solidified a bit too. Right. right. Well, because this isn't a contract today. Yes, so, so it's fine. Yeah, we, okay. As long as we check into that, yeah. Okay, and who was the second there? Are you okay with that? Uh, as the second? Th yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with us getting involved in this and seeing if if this can work. Um, a little skeptical. It's been done mm -hmm. before, and it. But well, I will tell you this will be run just slightly differently. This will be run more like Inspire. Okay. Um, That's my understanding from all. Okay. Of I I guess the only thing that I would want to add would be that if we if we put this part in, that will get five next semester, and then eight next year. That we will definitely be looking at not. Doing the transportation to River Rock. That's mm -hmm. like driving down 81. You know how I feel about that. I just think it's just a really, really long ride for those kids. And uh, I mean, you know, Greencastle is a lot closer. That's a consideration well, maybe for me. Well, I mean, we approve, we approve the slots for River Rock, so we have control over it. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, why we want to reduce slots at River Rock. Being for next year, year, right? Year. For next year, yeah. But that kind of has to be part of this. Like, like I, I, I'm not okay with saying we have five slots here and eight slots here. That to me, right? That's a lot. That's a lot mm -hmm. yeah, for the size school that we have. But I don't think any any of us are are you know like enamored with having to send kids to that far to River Rock. It was just there was no choice. Right. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. But I also. I want to make sure that it will be open for discussion and it won't just be a given. Okay. Well, as they said, we approved that contract. So, I mean, it has to come before, correct, Todd? Yes. Is that a year? That's a yearly, not a three year. But Boost is a three year and well, Inspire yeah, is a three year. Next year is it. Inspire is one year. Yeah. Oh. We, renew the, we renew the Inspire contracts yearly. So, so we have boost all this year yet. And okay, so back to at whether you're seconding. Yeah. If you don't I, want to do it. No, I'm okay. okay with it. Okay. And and Ashley, I'm okay with exploring this for a half for a semester and then deciding whether we want to continue or not and with how many slots. I mean, it makes sense to me to explore it for a semester, but we're by doing this, we're not obligating ourselves to next year, correct? Well, it depends we how you the way it stands now. You are, but you don't have to. You can you can change the motion of how long it would be to do. Just that's why I mentioned it because okay. you do have that option. I would be concerned with the level of commitment of the program if they think that it's only going to be. Five months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yes. I think if I mean, I think I think I agree with you in theory, but I think knowing that we really don't want to send students to River Rock, and there are perhaps students that should be going to River Rock that we're not sending because of the distance. I think this gives the high school a lot more options for short term, um, you know, placements for. It's a minimum age twelve. But uh, they were not prepared for elementary. But middle they are school. middle school. I didn't. Yes. Okay, well, that's a big difference there. So, so well, so that would be it'd be six to twelve. Ages yeah, six. So. Grade. I mean, grade, grade six to twelve. Yeah, yeah. just no elementary. Six. Well, that's a big difference too. You know, I also see the importance of these kids who are suspended having a place to go. 
We do not want these kids walking the street. I mean, well, and then we need, have the problem if we put them on on some kind of online thing. There's no supervision. They're not doing it. I know. Whereas That's here, good. they would I, have somebody. I know. The, these kids really need supervision. Now, the the kids will. They don't have a teacher for every every subject they are online for but however they have a teacher there'll be four staff members. they will have supervision yes and they need that right i think the students who really the, the only issue with it that that i did found that fine that you know we have to work through would be um special education they can provide that they have one special education teacher that has to travel around but they won't be the ones doing IEPs have to be our folks, and our folks are going to have to monitor that. But other than that, um, that we can sp send special ed. But it is a little more difficult than you know, some of the places. But the special ed would still have supervision. Correct. Mm -hmm. They have one special ed person that travels between. So okay. I'm not against this. I think my concern is that um, in line with the next item on the agenda, which is another consortium, is that we as a district are being the ones that have to say this program isn't going to go if we don't go for it. So between this one, which sounds really good, and then that Lincoln Health and Wellness Center, like if we don't say yes to that, that's not going to happen either, right? That one, actually, they only need to. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, is that correct, Mr. Holt? Yeah, I, I think that one. This one, it's because of the numbers. Okay. Uh, well, it could also not fly if somebody else doesn't approve it. Well, yeah, that's true. It won't fly. I don't think it's it like the list. Okay. We're so the I, largest I, player in it, so that's that's why. I just want I just want to make sure we're being mindful that with all of these consortiums that you know it, if it's coming down to us each time, that gives me pause right, the concern. Right. Sure. You know, yeah. so I'd, I'd, I'd rather not have to be the linchpin of right. the district be the linchpin for each of these. But yeah, no, any of the districts, if we're not on the bales, we okay. probably won't fly. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We have the motion and second. <clears throat> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So right. the contract will come back the next time. It, if all this goes through to all of them, yeah, the contract will come back. All right. Next item is the Lincoln Health and Wellness Center. Is that Dr. Klein or Mr. Holt? Sure. Mr. Holt. Actually, it'd be both of us. Uh, the Lincoln Health and Wellness Center, again, we've kind of uh, been putting in the information out there here and there, uh, trying to keep you updated with it. It's been a long process also. Um, the, the I think the uh, IU would like to have some sort of direction or answer by the end of this month. So that's why we have it to you today. Um, they need at least two districts uh, to go on. Right now, it's only between Tuscarora, Greencastle, and Wayne. They need two of us to be able to join that. Tuscarora did already pass it. So... Um, I do know they're moving forward already. So it just will take, I have a feeling we're the next on the board agenda. I think Greencastle might be another week or in the next week or so. One of the things that, you know, again, uh, there's there's pros and cons to this. We have discussed it internally about, is it worth even trying it? We believe it's worth taking the risk to try it because uh, of the benefits to our staff. Uh, we believe there are further benefits down the road to part-time staff and others uh, if we can work some of those deals out with these folks. But I know initially it would be for all of our staff that are on our uh, and the biggest thing is, is that they do not pay co-pays when they go to the office visit. They will not, that as some, the generic drugs, the basic drugs that you may have, if they have them in stock, uh, you get them for free. You don't pay for them. The third thing is our, our labs. Labs are typically free, but there are some that won't be. But most of the typical labs that people have done um, you know, I was talking during the teacher advisory and one of the teachers said, I I pay $75 every time I have a, a lab done and I have to have them done three times a year. This is a no brainer for me. She said, I don't love my private provider now that much. I'd rather save the money. So, um, 
Anyhow, so those are the three biggest things. We do believe it could have an impact on their premium premium shares over time, and at least what the the uh, estimates of what we've been given, they believe in three. It would take us about three years to save money. Uh, the first year you lose money, and the second year uh, they believe will break even, and the third year because it takes time to get people to. So, and that's really our biggest concern. Will our folks use? It? But we hope down the road that it would be something we could work through. It would be cheaper to, for us to do this and pay for it than it would be to give our part time people. So, it would be an option. Uh, so, that's kind of the future part of this down the road. But for now, and I, I'm going to let Mr. Holzman kind of give the business manager point of view because uh, he's better at it. Hey, Dr. Klein, I have a question for you before, Mr. Holzman. Um, has the uh, teachers union or the district surveyed teachers? Uh, um, we did the survey area. the teachers. I'm glad you said that. And actually, Eric has some of that information with us. Uh, and, and, the, uh, and we also, I've met with uh, one of the uh, union reps and they had basically two questions. Will this impact our current contract, which it won't? And uh, I forget the other one, but I responded to both the questions. So, uh, and the, the answer was no to both. Act them. And it's, oh, I think they were wondering, will this be an additional cost to contract in any of them? It won't. Actually, it's just a benefit, an additional benefit. And Mr. Holtzman, whenever you're expounding upon this, um, if you could answer the question of how it might benefit our part-time employees who are not under our health insurance program, I'd like to I'd like to have that answer too. Sure. Okay. No, I'd be happy to. Um, so to your first question, Mr. Smith, um, they did survey our employees. We had 198 employees respond from the survey, which is pretty good considering the size of our district. 54% uh, stated that they would definitely or probably use the health center. Um, the top five services that they would use it for would be colds, flu, immunization, lab tests, minor injuries, annual checkups. Um, early evenings, weekends, late evenings, and afternoons were preferred. Um, there's no plans, if this goes forward, to be open on weekends at this point. Based on their history, everybody wants it to be open on weekends, but they tend not to use it on weekends. They tend to go to an urgent care facility, typically. Um, uh, we actually looked at um, distances. So 41% of our employees travel zero to five miles from work to their appointments, to the doctor's appointments, and 25% drive six to 10 miles from work. Um, the distances for our, our schools, not where people live, but our schools is anywhere from 7.6 miles at Fairview to 10.3 miles um, at the furthest, which would be uh, Hooverville. Believe it or not, it's a little bit slow, low, further away than Maori, surprisingly, not by much, but a little bit further. Um, the cost, the first year cost would be net cost would be seven thousand dollars to us. This is what they're estimating right now. They're estimating by year two, it's about one hundred seventy three thousand dollars savings. A five year cumulative number is about one point one million, one point two million dollars in savings is what they're estimating. Um, we're self insured, so if somebody's going to um, that care facility and they're having their you know needs taken care of there, then we're not getting billed through our because we're self insured. We're not getting a bill then from the insurance company, so to speak, or coming through Highmark and through another provider. So we will see those savings. Um, you know, looking at it from a different perspective on financially, let's say that they're wrong by a factor of two. That would be a half a million dollar savings over five years for us, which is, again, a positive trend. Our medical insurance um, has been going up, and I, I use the term insurance, but we're self-insured, um, but our costs have been going up, I should say. Um, and right now, we're projecting at least a 12% increase for next year and probably even the year after that. Those are huge increases. So again, we're trying to find some ways that we can mitigate those additional costs. Um, they would have a family nurse practitioner and a certified medical assistant or licensed practical nurse. They had both of them in that slot, as well as a patient advocate. Um, some of the other pieces to this are that they have centers also in New Oxford and York. So if we have any employees who may live over in Adams County, they could actually go to the New Oxford office as well. That would be an option for them or any of our employees. They could go over there as well. Um, the cost for this will come out of our medical fund balance. That's the way typically most of the districts are funding this. They take it out of your fund balance because that's where we pour our money from anyway. As of June 30th, we had about $2.2 million in our medical fund balance. We were over the two-month threshold. Um, 
And I'm trying to think. And then, uh, Ms. Zimmerman, you had the question about uh, support staff who typically do not receive medical benefits. We have a lot of support staff that do not. Um, we did um, talk to them, talk to the IU um, about the possibility down the road of our part-time employees, as well as even applicants, you know, for them to go get a physical and TB test and things of that nature. Could that be something that we look at? And they said, yes, it would be, but they really would like to make sure that the center itself is working and viable first before we go down that path, because they would have to price that out differently. That's not something that the other districts are really talking about at this stage. But certainly that is something that we could be used for. Um, you know, right now, a medical plan for us, a single plan costs $9,000. And this plan here would cost about $720 for each person and their, you know, that would be using that. So that's a big difference. Now, they wouldn't provide all the services, obviously, but it would provide a level of service for those part-time employees down the road. Can you repeat those? Yeah. You, you, it's going to cost us how much the first year? $7,000 is what $7, they're estimating. $7,000. Mm -hmm. They're estimating that between the savings and between the cost. Because okay, what they're so saying is it'll take some time to kind of build usage. Okay. Yeah. But then you're saying by three years, we're going to save a million and a half dollars? Uh, by year five, in, cumulatively. So year so two, gonna... it's 173000 Year three, it's 277 And then 350 but then 380000 to $173,000? And, and by year two, right? They estimate that you're going to start seeing that savings coming through. If you if you think about it too in the scope, our medical costs are about five point six million dollars this year. So when you think about a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it can move the know, needle I pretty quick. Like a yeah. amount. I just yeah. don't see a saving or costing a seven thousand one year and yeah. then saving a hundred and seventy-three yeah. the next year. That seems phenomenal to me. Doesn't it? You guys think that sounds right? <laughs> Well, they again, they're basing this on many other facilities well, that they run in similar ways. Yeah. Okay. So you have, yeah. is that what percentage of people using it? That base? That would be 100%. No, that would be below 50%, actually. Below 50%. They're using, in fact, if we go above 50%, they would look at having to expand the hours and they would actually want to increase the charge by, I believe it's another $10 a month, is what it would be if we go past 50%, which would still be a benefit because that would still be a savings to us then at that point. The other thing yeah. is, is, is so you understand what, because it, it is the uh, Lincoln yeah. uh, Health and Wellness Center, and it's the same as what the IU has, our f p folks, as Eric said, can use that one, but their folks that work in this district in Greencastle and others can use the one right now, the Grove, Center, Grove Medical Center is where they're. I just, I just don't see how it could possibly be that much of a difference. Not my field, but I mean, yeah. I just and think that sounds. Me. And again, they base that they base their numbers a little bit on our district. Uh, Greencastle had different numbers. Greencastle had a, a greater loss in year one, yep. and it took to year two till you kind of balanced it out. Then by year three, you were ahead of the game. Wayne, uh, Tuscarora, they actually showed savings the first year, and it's because there's really very limited facilities in the Tuscarora School District area. So they assumed that they would have a much greater utilization of that facility than what the other districts would. So they really do kind of customize this based on what they're looking at from a population perspective. And the the other part yeah. is that one, one advantage our staff will have over Greencastle, I don't know about Tuscarora, but over Greencastle is that we do not have a highly qualified, high qual, a highly qualified deductible and or a qualified high deductible and have that then there is a fee that you pay when you go in so because we don't have that that's why our staff can go in and have no copay right we have a high deductible plan but it's not a qualified right. high deductible plan um and again in that situation they'd have to actually build their employees and theirs but not for ours and that's a federal law it was it was a nuance that we weren't aware of but it didn't apply to us so Anybody else want to comment, question on this? Now, again, I think this is direction because we have no contract right now. It, it is direction. So they're asking for district direction by the end of this month. And then their plan, my understanding, was to come back to the boards in December with agreements. So the, the official agreements will come back. The goal would be to have it open by the summer of 23. How long would the contract be? Would this be like a year to year thing or would this be like a five year thing? My understanding is it's year to year. Yeah, that's yeah. my understanding. So at one point now, again, we haven't that, seen the actual agreement yet, but right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to have some understandings with the association, start this and then. 
so then it doesn't con right so we're we're in the process of doing so you you'll likely see an mou at contract at the same time i wouldn't want to have one without the other yeah and one of the things i'm sorry i didn't mean to jump in yeah, one of the so, things finance uh, you sure yeah mm -hmm. okay like again, from a financial perspective, they're showing that one point one, one point two million dollars savings over five years. And even in my mind, I'm thinking, let's say they're wrong by a factor of two. Let's say it's only a savings of five hundred thousand dollars. It's still a savings for us, and that doesn't even have the amount of our employees that they're saving by going to that facility because they're not paying their deductibles or paying for prescriptions for most of their prescriptions. So again, and then I start thinking even a little bit further. Even if they're wrong by a factor of four, it's still basically a savings, so to speak, or even starts getting closer to being no savings. But it's a benefit for everyone at the end of the day for that same situation. Now, if we were fully insured it would probably be much harder to kind of look at this because then you would have something you're paying for a full insurance program. But again, being self-insured, we are a little bit different situation. For, so right now you said Tuscarora has given their go ahead to move yeah. forward. Assuming Greencastle does not, does that change our costs or savings at all? Not according to them. They said okay, they so would So it doesn't matter through. if Greencastle jumps in or not, that doesn't affect yeah. us. Okay. Uh, no. Not from what they. Okay. Uh, we haven't had a motion yet. Correct. We have a motion to approve this. Sure. Um, on the item itself, there's no recommended action on here. So, so there's no. Oh, it, there's no administrative recommendation for approval or disapproval. I think we need to have yeah, that on there. Yeah, yeah, and, and it would be a, it would be a, re we're, we are recommending that we move. Okay. I assume that, but. Yeah. Okay, thank you for pointing. Okay, now a motion, anyone? I'll move to approve. We have a second. A second. Anything further? Just to clarify one more time, this mm -hmm. is for employees and family members. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, who are covered by our insurance? Who are covered by our insurance? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, if they're covered by our insurance. Speaking yeah. for, his health costs are only going to go up, and so, and I think, as a school district, the more benefits we can provide employees is also a good thing. And so, you know, while I, it would be nice if we got to the one point two million in savings. Um, mm -hmm. Even if we go half of that, I think it's still a net positive. So, and, you know, even though we'll have to foot the bill again in the first year, um, I think overall, I think this is probably a good idea. And since they're year to year contracts, I think we can also, if we see that no one's using it, um, we can opt out later, is my understanding. Yeah. So, you know, I think. Right. I would hope people would use it because I think this is again an added benefit for the employees. But if we see no one's using it, we can opt out later. I think you'll see it will take a little time at the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's what they told us. Yeah. I have one question. Is it our is it our responsibility to advertise this or is there going to be a uh, an organized effort to promote it? Among all the I think it would probably be a joint effort. I don't yeah, think we got that far yet, Dr. Klein. No, but I, I understand. I think they both do, would be involved. They do some, but we'll also. Yeah. Do I think a lot, lot of this is going to be depend on how you, how well you explain yeah. it to people. Correct. You're absolutely right, Dr. Boyer. So, yeah. what is the, I think the lab issue? Is huge. Oh my. What What's yeah. the What is the benefit to them? Yeah, or to them. No, to Lincoln, oh, to the, to the, oh, to our the company. insurance company, yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, you know, again, we're in the Lincoln Benefit Trust, so that the trust is really kind of a separate factor from this to a certain extent. In a sense, we're going to kind of hurt the trust slightly because we'd be using really less services through them. But again, we're self-insured, so... Right. Um, but from their perspective, they're, they're looking at this also as a savings for their employees as well. If they have a facility here, some of their employees are going to come here to that facility. Um, they're looking at... Um, you know, really as this way to kind of, we've removed some of the middlemen from the insurance process by being self-insured, but we're still paying for, you know, paying the other costs. This kind of removes another layer and you're really hiring the medical professionals directly and paying for those labs directly. So it saves the IU money as well. It saves us money at the end of the day. Um, and I can tell you, you know, it's interesting. The, the IU, believe it or not, actually was talking about this more than 10 years ago. 
Um, it's taken that long for them to kind of work through the process of looking at different options. But I can remember 10 years ago sitting in meetings over there where they talked about doing this. And it just, it took quite a while for them really to find the right providers, right companies, and to move forward with it. Well, I, I'm i very skeptical. I mean, since this is not approving contracts, I guess we can pursue it, but I'm going to a lot more about it. Sure. Change my mind when contract cut time. But this just sounds a little good to too be good to be true. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know that I think people are going to travel that distance. I don't know that I believe people go to doctors they don't know. Um, but I'll, I'll wait for a month until I'm <laughs> asked to approve any contract, I guess. So I think some people, I would like to know what meds are included, because I think for medications, yeah. You're not. You're still seeing your doctor, but you're going there. You might be going there to get medication. I also think for the labs, because our insurance is the same. Our insurance isn't real great with lab work. But then you're also going to have. Are you not going to have the issue of communication? Labs. I mean, I don't know if people are willing to do it. I. I mean, I have different doctors in different places, and sometimes it doesn't get communicated up here. Oh yeah, I know. you know, and that kind of thing. So, are we going to have that availability? I, you know, I don't know. I don't I know just if there's a lot out there still. I don't Actually. know if they said there is a pig, although I don't remember hearing. But you mean like a tele type? Yeah. Um, they do have a they do have a patient advocate line that you can call to set up appointments. Yeah, portal. Yeah, portal. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the communication from one system to another uh, system uh, because you. Well, that would be a question. Going. I wouldn't know if you have. I mean, it doesn't. Matter. I still think it's a good idea, but if you have labs run, like where do they go? Yeah. So what is a what is the copay, or just a twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. Okay. So. I talked to one teacher. It would be significant said, if you had kids. a bunch of kids. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a this insurance? Our insurance. Do I? Yeah. Not anymore. No, but, you, but you did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are certain things that I think this would benefit, but again, I think it's all a matter of explaining it to people that it's not all or nothing. You can do both. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can just you can remain right. with your provider for certain things, but you could right. go there for certain things. I don't think anybody. I would say perhaps many people don't really care who draws their blood. Right. You don't right. know who that, that's not your provider right. anyway. Right. If you're going for lab work. Right. But it is like, if you're talking about annual checkups and things like that, right. that is. Right. So you wouldn't go for, you're saying you wouldn't go for that necessarily, but you'd go. For well, and in, and in this area, many of our doctors, many of our, we now have doctor's offices that are running without doctors. So. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I do believe that we're, uh, seeing more and more corporations um, <clears throat> as, you know, 20 years ago, we had our own provider that we went to all the time. Now you go to an office and sometimes don't know who you're going to get. You know, so um, there's less doctors and more CRNCs and are changing. I mean, Get a someplace like this, and you don't know who's coming in. Yeah, oh, really? oh, my understanding, but I, maybe I shouldn't even say any names. It's just I, I, I just think that's a corporation. I, I just see things changing in our med. Oh, we're also kind of hoping this might be a little competition. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you for that discussion, okay, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. On to Meriki. That Dr. Pine. Oh uh, yeah. That, okay. I I I I know I can. This one I can butcher up to, but <laughs> but anyhow, Meriki. Uh, we we have. Again, this is an agreement to uh, send our kids there if we need to, but these are not seats that we buy. We only pay for use. That's it. But we've had this contract a number of years, I believe. And there are okay. stipulations in terms of student admission criteria. Okay, a motion? Move to approve. Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
to Act 57 resolution. Okay, Mr. Holtzman. Thank you, ma'am. So this is a, a new state law on the books that goes into effect really with the next tax year, so the 23-24 tax year for us. Basically, um, it's a requirement that all school boards have, and all taxing authorities, I really should say, which would include you know most municipalities, um, counties, what they have to do is they basically have to amend um, our uh, requirements here and accept um, late tax bills in situations where uh, the tax owner has changed, the property owner has changed. So if somebody can come and prove, um, starting again over next year, if they uh, did not receive the bill and yet they come in, there's a form that DCED is going to create and send out to everyone. But if they come in and they can show that they did not receive it, um, they have a copy that of the transfer and they can make payment, then we can't charge them a penalty or a fee. That's really what it comes down to. So basically the goal of this was, you know, somebody who, Trades of property in June is really probably the most common time where this could happen uh, because our tax office does keep things current up to date pretty quickly all the way up through the end of May, early June. But then you have to lock the tax file in at some point and whenever you start sending those bills out. And so what happens is potentially you have somebody who has transferred property in June who never receives the tax bill, goes to the old property owner, they never see it. Um, so this is the issue I think that kind of came up at the state level. Um, we do have good tax collectors who do a great job of notifying people that when this does happen. And we've also kind of put our thinking caps a little bit on some other ideas, especially with larger properties. It might be even in our best interest to maybe send something out certified mail. If you have, you know, one of your real large property owners happen to change in June, hey, let's let's get some notification to them right away. It's worth $10 to make sure that they know about this and make sure they pay the bill. Again, that would only make sense in something very large. Um, but basically, it's a requirement that we approve this resolution. Um, again, it creates a little bit more work for our tax collectors, creates a little bit more work for the school district, but it's a requirement. Motion? Move to approve. Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Sorry, I have to bring those to you, but it's... Okay. okay, on to the rest of the financials, Mr. Holt. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have the normal bills payable. We have purchase orders, uh, just the normal update on the uh, budget for this point in the time of the year, um, occupation exonerations, and then property assessment changes. Um, we have two in there that are relatively significant compared to typically, you know, often you'll see this for somebody's house that's reduced just a tiny amount, um, but these are a little bit larger than normal. One is for Zellinger. Um, this is the community center that was uh, we have over here. Um, they're reducing it significantly for its assessed value. I think if you drive by the property, you notice it was probably being taxed for that very old school building that's there that has not been in great repair for a very long time. So they're reducing that down significantly. Um, the big one, though, really is the Wayne Heights Mall. So the Wayne Heights Mall appealed their uh, tax assessment. Um, if you remember, this goes back to their 1961 values. So they were being taxed at $835,000. But if you use the common level ratio, it was a market value of $8.8 .8 million for that property. So we were saying that that property over where Tractor Supplies and Keystone, that that whole property was worth $8.8 .8 million. We, the county, so to speak, the assessment office. So they have appealed. The assessment office has come back and agreed to reduce it to a market value of $7 million. And that's what we're bringing forward here to you um, at this point to approve. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, potentially they can always appeal and go to the Court of Common Pleas. It doesn't stop them from doing that. But what you would be doing here is basically approving the assessed uh, or the appeal uh, office's uh, current um, assessment. Okay, motion. Here's your proof. Second. Questions on any of our items? Not. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Clayton comments. Anyone? I just okay. want to direct everyone's attention to the invitation. It's time for <laughs> comprehensive planning once again. Uh, so we are uh, scheduled at this time to have three meetings. Uh, the first one is November 21st at um, the Washes Library, and then we'll have two additional meetings in December and January. Uh, the plan would have to be board approved uh, by uh, February 28th and then on public um, on the website for public review um, and then final approval submitted to PDE by the end of March. So 
Um, I was waiting uh, for some of the future ready information to be out. I mean, obviously we have academic scores in terms of individual PSSAs as well as Keystone scores, but looking at the PVOS data and additional sources of information, I'm still waiting for a release from PDE. But um, most of us have been through the process before. You all are welcome. Uh, we are going to be using the new template, uh, which is a little different than what we did in 2020. So um, hopefully we have full representation from the board or considerable amount of representation from the board. December meeting conflicts with the budget committee that I have on my calendar. Yeah, but it is that. So I'm sure we can move the budget we, meeting. We, it's, it's, it's exhilarating as it's, budget sounds. Budget this sounds a lot more more fun. Our comprehensive yeah. plan meeting. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went with Monday. I looked at the calendar and there's I, I recognize there's a number of, of conflicts. I thought Monday was a safer bet. Um, obviously, we will be having our teachers involved. Um, obviously, the admin support staff, and uh, we are in the process of recruiting uh, parents or community members. So you could also make or send recommendations my way, and uh, Elizabeth or Aaron and I will definitely follow up. Okay. Anything else? Oh, I had another one. Um, actually, now I'll be able to find it on my phone, but um, I'm looking at Dr. McCallum. Uh, we received a really nice email from a PIAA field hockey rep. Um, indicating how uh, she was always so pleased to come to Waynesboro and how the field, uh, the turf, I guess, was in, in such great shape and that um, it was just a very welcoming environment. She always looks forward to coming to referee. A ref? A ref. And a ref. would that be? Are you willing? You could tell me later if you don't want to. Maybe she might not want to be identified. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. I can, I can forward you that. Yeah. Okay. So, Just I mean, it's always know. nice yeah. to, to get positive feedback, um, especially from people who are, you know, essentially guests in our, you know, mm -hmm. on our district um, and referees sometimes have a very challenging position uh, or they're a challenging okay. position. So back uh, also referenced um, um, Mrs. Smith, like our athletic trainer always being available. And, and um, so it was, it was good email to receive. Okay, uh, there's nothing else from Clayton people. On to board comments, anyone? I, I'd like to say one thing. I should not have mentioned the name Keystone um, because I have not had any personal experience with them. So um, if people are have been offended by my comment, I apologize. I have only heard from others that they have had difficulty. and. Um, and I do know for a fact that our medical community is being overtaken by corporations and it is um, less and less likely that you're gonna have one sole provider there. So anyway, I just wanted to amend my comment from previous. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Anything happening? All right, if not, we will have a, I think, short second session afterwards. Uh, we will not come back for that. So if we could have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. See you in hey, two Rita. weeks. Where?